So that's what you're doing here. It's a continuum of freedom versus control. This episode was requested by my patron, Nikki Marie. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're gonna talk about RP lock versus fluid time. It's important when running a role play group that everyone have a similar idea of how time progresses. This is because, of course, when we're talking about text-based online narrative role play, you can't write as fast as things actually happen in real life. Plus, you could have people posting at all times of day depending on when they're available or when their time zone is. So how do you keep everyone on the same page? There are two main ways that a role play group can handle time progression within the group. Those are RP lock and fluid time. These exist along a continuum, so you may have an RP lock system that takes some elements from fluid time and vice versa. In this video, we're gonna break down what each one is and what the benefits and drawbacks are of each of those systems. RP lock means your character cannot be in more than one place at a time. So basically, while you're writing one scene between your character and another character, you can't simultaneously write another scene with your character until that first scene concludes. When using RP lock, you don't have to keep track of a timeline. The timeline is obvious because your character can only be in one scene at a time. This ensures no one has to wonder what conversation came first or how your character might feel in a later conversation based on a previous one or other timeline concerns like that. This also reduces the need for out of character plotting because anyone reading can tell exactly where that character is. There's no need to wonder if everyone's on the same page. They obviously are. RP lock leaves no room for confusion, so that means you can have truly emergent storytelling with little effort from your players. If a roleplay uses RP lock, you'll usually see it described in the rules somewhere. They'll have some kind of cap on the number of scenes your character can have at once. The traditional is only one scene at a time as I described before, but it's still RP lock if there's a cap on the number of scenes. So you might see like two or three or something like that, that's still RP lock. Allowing two or three scenes instead of one mitigates some of the drawbacks of RP lock. So what are some of those drawbacks? Since your character can only have a finite number of scenes, that means that if your partner or all of your partners happen to be slow at that moment, your character can get stuck and not able to move on with the story you want to tell. And this is why a lot of times when it comes to RP lock, you'll see the limit be two or three instead of just one, because the chances of multiple people being slow are less than one person being slow. Also, as we mentioned previously, RP lock reduces the need for out of character plotting, but it also reduces the usefulness of it. Because your character's storyline is so linear, there's often no need for plotting or any plotting done ends up being wasted because how the scene progressed takes precedent. And that means that if you really like a lot of plotting and planning and really want to know what your character's story beats are going to be, RP lock makes that difficult. Fluid time is at the other end of the spectrum from RP lock. In this system, there's no limit on the number of interactions your character can have or when those scenes take place. Instead, either the timeline doesn't matter or players work it out amongst themselves. Since the timeline is free and open in this system, there's no way your character can get stuck. You can be writing several scenes at once and the only way that the timeline is going to matter is if it matters to you and the person you're writing with. You guys can work that out or you can choose not to. This allows for maximum creativity from your players. They don't necessarily have to worry about how chronologically threads go. They can work that out amongst themselves without the hindrance of a time mechanic. Unlike RP lock, where the system is typically explained in the rules, if a time system isn't explained anywhere in the rules, they're probably using fluid time. And just like RP lock, you might see modifications to this. For example, we use a month by month fluid time system. So it's April now, any starters that people write in April 
take place at some point during the month of April for whatever the year of the roleplay is. And then when it rolls around to May, the same thing will be true of May. But we don't have any requirement for people to work out within April what order those threads go in. And most of the time, chronology more specific than that doesn't end up mattering for us. And anytime it does, players just handle it amongst themselves in the DMs. Players that do want to know what order threads go in now have to do the work themselves. There is no mechanic in the roleplay that dictates that timeline, and that can be distressing for some players where they really want to keep things in order in their heads. But personally, we haven't found a lot of problems with it unless a player is trying to go outside of their own character's timeline and try to dictate those timelines. If they just keep to their character, it's all good. Now, that being said, we have had before where people are frustrated by not knowing the timeline and they try to dictate other characters' timelines to the writers of those characters, and this can cause some stress for the roleplay. As a mod of a fluid time system, we have had instances where we've had to coach players to let go and help them understand that not everyone actually cares about the timeline and they'll just have to concentrate on their own. However, this isn't common, and typically when it happens, it's from people that have never experienced a fluid time roleplay before, and so they just need a little coaching, a little push, and then they're good to go. I've found in my experimentation and observation, RP lock works better for roleplays where there either is a younger player base, or a less experienced player base, or those time controls are needed for players to feel satisfied. And this is because the mechanic leaves less room for people to come in and exploit things in an unfair way. Fluid Time, by contrast, works better for games where you've got a lot of older players, or players that are more experienced, or players that are used to plotting. This is because the mechanic does leave room for people to come in and mess with things and do some unfair things, which means your players have to be better at out-of-character communication and building trust and building those connections so that they can speak to each other if someone does something they don't like. So that's what you're doing here. It's a continuum of freedom versus control. And just like all decisions when it comes to running a roleplay, what you'll want to think about is what is your ideal player that you're trying to attract, and you should be putting in the system that matches with that ideal player. So that's my RP lock versus fluid time video. Which system do you lean more towards? Obviously from the video you can tell I favor a fluid time system, not really a huge fan of RP lock, but I can totally see role plays where it has its place. So I'm curious, what do you guys use? Now that you've heard this, are you thinking of maybe changing it or did this just really solidify that you've got the right choice for your role play? Let me know all of that down below and don't forget as always to make it a great day.